Okay, so what I want to do now is show you how you, we can do away with specifying username and passwords um, by using the user config file. So we can essentially generate a key for logging into WebLogic. And so to do that, we can run this store user config command to generate a user store and key file. So, and you've got to run this while you're connected to WebLogic in an online mode. So you can see here that I'm connected to the WLST domain and the command that we need to run is the store user config command. So if I scroll up here, you can see the user, the syntax here is it takes three parameters. They're all optional. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to specify any parameters. We're going to take the defaults and note the output. So just run store user config with no params and hit enter. And you can see here that WebLogic will generate the keys and store them in a default location. So you can see they stored them in my home directory. Okay, so looking at the syntax, we see here that store user config specifies three parameters and they're all defaults. If I run this command without specifying any parameters, WebLogic will, will most likely generate the config and key file in your home directory. I don't want to do that. I want to specify this file so that it goes into the um, domain directory. Now in production, you wouldn't store this key file in your domain directory. You would, you would store it someplace much safer than that. So perhaps your home directory or another directory would strict your permissions. But let's go ahead and, and run the store user config and specify the location the location of the config and key file. Admin config. We'll do this. We'll do admin config. And then admin key hit enter and so hit yes to confirm that we want to create the key and then note the confirmation message where the config and the key file were created and so we're now going to use these to log into our domain so I want to copy off the location so I have it for later reference now run WLST again oops so let's disconnect from WLS from uh, the admin server by running disconnect, and then we're now con we're done. We're now disconnected. So now go ahead and run the connect command again, but this time we're going to specify the user config file. And so the user config file and the user key file replace the username and password. So the syntax here is in the lab guide, but the first parameter is user config file equals, and it's going to be the fully qualified path to the config file that we just created. And then the next parameter is the user key file. And that's also in the same location as the config file, but still specify the fully qualified path. And then last is the URL to the admin server. And make sure you, you're qualifying all of the, the argument names like I'm doing here, user config file equals, user key file equals, and URL equals. Okay, so once you've got all three parameters in, go ahead and hit okay. Go ahead and hit enter. And you can see that we're connected. So the, the username and password for connecting to this domain are, are encrypted in that key file. And this is, the more, this is the preferred method for connecting securely to WebLogic. And 
ideally to make this more secure, we would have, we, we would have done it over SSL had we configured the domain uh, admin port. Okay, so that's it for this introduction to WebLogic scripting tool. I hope there's enough information here to get you up and running with WebLogic scripting tool. Um, using the record function within the admin console is an excellent place to start. So you can click around, do some things, perform some functions, and then see the resulting output in the recorded file. And so that's how I learned how to, how to use WLST. That in conjunction with the online documentation for WLST and the MBean reference. Um, I think for about 99% of what you're going to do where you're creating, setting up domains and configuring them and maybe deploying applications or monitoring a domain, then there's only a handful of MBeans that you'll need access to. So, so those sorts of things are fairly, fairly trivial. That's it for this. This is the last lab in this lecture, in this course. So I hope you found all of these uh, very helpful. If you have any questions on WebLogic Scripting Tool, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you very much.